one, 100%. Just absolutely tough to have a conversation like that. And with that, I say, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Show Archive. I'm Wokey, and I'm here with Zenra. Hello, everybody. I didn't record any of that conversation, by the way. There's no way that YouTube would allow any of that conversation. So people no, would just YouTube have to... Would, <laughs> no, I would be, be nuked. gone. Done and gone. I, nuked from the sky. There's no question. Nuked from orbit, yeah. No, people are just going to have to wonder what we were talking about. But that's okay, because today we're talking about Kuriko's basketball. <laughs> but anyway, what's... Yo, hey... What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a show in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves to watching every single Shonen Jump anime currently available to us in English and talking about it and enjoying it. And we have so far not actually run into anything we've hated, but there's only a matter of time. Eventually, we are going to have to cover something that we don't like <laughs> just by... Well, actually, that's not true. You really did not like Dragon Ball Super Hero. Super Hero. <laughs> yeah, that movie sucks ass. Yeah. Do you know what? It's funny enough. I finally got a comment on uh, that video. Really? <laughs> Which is really funny because it was after I put it under your tweet where you were talking about Gohan's Ark. So the only comment that I ever put on there was from me saying, just a reminder, keep the comments civil. I trust you guys, but you, as a Dragon Ball fan, I know that it gets uncivil and then the first reply five months later is from a guy who says i refuse to be civil so <laughs> <laughs> check out episode 23 of shonen archive featuring d, d free <laughs> that made me laugh <laughs> that, that was a legitimately good lion saying i refuse to be civil um so yeah we plan to do this until the actual heat death of the universe or um one of us gets taken down or i make a 2000 word tweet whichever one happens first we're getting slowly to the day where they're gonna allow me to have a 2000 word tweet yeah we're gonna be in a danger zone real mm. danger zone when that happens yeah 100 percent. we're gonna be living on the edge it's gonna be like the cold war all over again except for this time you like both sides as opposed to <laughs> everyone hating all sides of the cold war <laughs> <laughs> Take that. That's my hot my my hot take on the Cold War. Both sides sucked. <laughs> Got him. Got take him. That Cold War. Teach shit, Ronald Reagan. Did you know my mom still does has a strong dislike for Ronald Reagan for <laughs> something he promised he would do and he never did? <laughs> really? Of all the things to hate Ronald Reagan for, you found something he never did? Yeah, my mom specifically had to deal with immigrants. So she said, I remember he specifically promised this. He promised that. It never came. She still holds that grudge, and he has been dead for over <laughs> how many years? 20 years, maybe? No, not 20 a while. years. 10 years? Not I, long enough, but a while. Not long enough, but yeah, I, I was laughing in the car when she was telling me her Ronald Reagan story. <laughs> I feel like you've told me the story. I feel like we've talked about Ronald Reagan before. We, talked we about might have talked about him in any capacity because we, Ronald Reagan is just like, fuck that guy. Yeah. So it might have been something else. It's but really funny like to do the him. Ronald Reagan voice, though. <laughs> before I, I was about to turn into Nixon and say, I'm not a crook. It's very similar. <laughs> <laughs> it's very similar. He made a movie with a monkey. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about Kuriko's Basketball. You typically we do Gintama, which we did, which the video for that released about two days ago, and then right afterwards is uh, either Kuroko's Basketball or Jujutsu Kaisen, and this week it is Kuroko's Basketball, and also now thanks that our, now that our uh, Reagan talk is out of the way. <laughs> now that our Reagan, I'm gonna make sure to leave a note here where it just says Woki and Zen talk about Ronald Reagan for a bit. <laughs> I was going to say, also thanks to Kuriko's Basketball, because one of the pre people in there said it would be very helpful if, uh, he said, first of all, absolutely love this, could you guys do a, um, like a chapter summary so I can easier come back and maybe you, if I want to just hear a specific episode. I said, that's a great idea, why haven't I been doing that? So that's why it's now in there, and I'm going to slowly start going through the back, <laughs> once uh, I stop playing uh, Like a Dragon Ishin. I will go back to the older episodes and start adding in chapters so it's a little bit easier if someone just wants to hear about specific stuff. So there you go. I'll make sure to note here. There you go. That is a good idea. Look at that. Yeah. So I'll make sure to put in that own specific segment. If someone just doesn't want to hear us talk about Ronald Reagan for a bit, <laughs> then <laughs> they don't have Why to... wouldn't they want that? Why wouldn't the people want the Reagan break? <laughs> <laughs> the Reagan break that. Oh, dude, dude. Oh, man. Uh, man, shit. It's a damn shame that we're only doing Shonen Archive. 
where it's only shonen jump there's a really good bit in uh um you know how i'm super into fate that's the thing that keeps this channel running and is actually right. lets me uh, do show yeah right there's a bit in um one of the fate animes called fate zero where uh and so in fate it's about a holy grail war where like real life history people are brought back to life to kind of f- participate in a holy grail war and in that one it takes place in the 90s and uh iskandar or aka alexander the great is watching tv and he's looking at the tv and says like who is this mighty leader on screen and he goes bill clinton and then they show anime bill clinton he goes like i want to fight this bill clinton <laughs> It is a really good bit. It's my favorite bit from there when he starts looking at the TV, looking at Bill Clinton, goes like, hmm, this would be a good man to fight in battle. <laughs> Unfortunately, Bill Clinton has not joined the Fate Universe since then. So Really unfortunate. No. Yeah. I'm waiting, though. We're getting there. We're getting very close for them just to saying, fuck it. I'm just waiting for Bill Clinton to die so he can be added to Fate. <sighs> uh, anyway, Kuriko's basketball. That's the thing we're going to be talking about today. St- going from episode 6 all the way to episode 10, I believe? Yes. It's five episodes. It's going to be those, and then we're going to get into it. I'm trying to find the episode name, and I just realized now I don't know. There it is, anime. I was like looking at the specific site, because like, I just need the name of the episode, because <laughs> I don't remember the names of them, and I don't write them down. All right, here we go. Your... Basketball? No, is didn't we see this? No, we we saw your ba- We're on the one after your basketball. Let me tell it you. Be called, t- I think it's. Uh, let me tell you two things. Let yeah. me tell you two things. That's what it is. All right. So go ahead, Zen. Tell us about the basketball which Kuroko plays, and tell us about what happens. And let me tell you two things. <laughs> okay. So uh, our boys find out that they're going to be playing um, another member of the generation of miracles. It's going to be Shutoku, who has Mitarima, which is the other member that we. Uh, have met so far other than Kisei. Uh, not that they're guaranteed going to be playing them, but that they're going to be uh, an opponent in this tournament that they need to do to get into the Inter-High tournament. Uh, so they decide they're going to work on some training to, to improve themselves because they're really tired from playing against Kisei. Uh, it, was, it was too stressful on their bodies. So they go to get this special sandwich from the cafeteria that's like made of all this fancy shit uh, that's supposedly like makes you better and and the training is to get through the crowd to get one uh so there's this really long scene of them all trying to get through the crowd and they keep getting ejected and the the cuts where they get ejected are all like their little stick figures getting launched out of the (laughs) thing it's really funny and it happens like a bunch of times um kagami ends up being like all right i have a plan uh and he grabs this dude and throws him on top of the crowd and starts like crowd surfing him to the front and he's like yeah this is working my american tactic uh and then they it, the people get wise to it and they do another shot where they end up getting ejected from the crowd <laughs> and two different times after kagami tries and fails to break through he lays on the ground and in full english says this is japanese lunchtime rush <laughs> why are you an american <laughs> yeah and they're like why are you an american all of a sudden um then it's revealed that Kuroko got it because he the crowd just like he kind of followed the crowd all the way to the front and then he just bought it and left um they were all happy and ate it and Kagami's like I don't give a shit what sandwich I get unless it's as long as it's really big and he got like a a BLT that was like massive the super long BLT yeah um they find out their first match in the tournament is against Shinkyo Academy who has a foreign exchange player so the conflict of this is just that there's a black guy on the enemy team. If, uh, finally, the Japanese version of the he's white scene from Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're like, oh no, he's large. He's and so tall. big and so foreign. Um, <laughs> and they uh, decided uh, they needed a nickname for him because they couldn't pronounce his foreign name. So they decided to call him Dad because his name is Papa. Yeah, Papa uh, um, Mibayosiki. And so they start doing training, and they have a training montage to the title song, which is great. I love yeah. when they do that. It's really good. 
Yeah, uh, and then the game begins, and Papa's like, who is this lost child? And he, like, <laughs> picks up Kuroko. And he's like, who is this little boy? What are you doing here, little boy? Uh, and Kuroko gets tilted because he doesn't like to be disrespected, despite being a very meek individual. Um, so the game begins. Uh, they're all in awe of his size at first. They're like, oh my god, you know, he does the layup, or the, what do you call it? The When they toss the ball and they jump for it. Oh shit, I don't remember. Now you're asking. Start a basketball game. Oh, the the tip the, off. The tip, the, tip off. Off. the tip off. Yes, correct. Yeah, they go for the tip off, and the guy gets it because he's just way taller than uh, Kagami is, so Kagami can't jump high enough. Um, they they get kind of overwhelmed by his physicality at first, and then they slowly start turning it around when Kuroko starts getting involved with his trickier stuff. After they have a talk with. Uh, I think it's Huga talks to the other team captain, and he's like, you know, we don't blame you for bringing in a good player, but if you think you're just going to ride a good player's coattails to victory, uh, you don't have a chance. And then they have, like, a little moment, and then Kagami's like, hey, you know, you're going to find out that that little kid, the person you keep calling a little kid, is going gonna, gonna to mess your shit up if you keep fucking around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's the end of the episode. <sighs> All right, so this one for me... It was really enjoyable. I really liked it. There was a little part. There's a. It's really funny that this happens multiple times, and I think it's happened at least in two sports anime. Uh, not anime, but one of them was a manga, and this is the anime where there's a central conflict and the central. Actually, three. I have forgot that they did it in this. The central conflict here is that this person is black, and they're very good at sports. Yeah, the whole the whole conflict of this first game is like, man, we're gonna have to be better at basketball than this black guy <laughs> yeah and at least they just kind of leave it at that and they don't say anything more they just say he's yeah foreign. they don't they don't like lean into it too hard but no it, it, the conflict really is just is this guy is foreign and much bigger than us because we're japanese it's not like i shield 21 that went into like a full-on breakdown of like let me tell you about the genetic I difference between that that shit was fucking crazy yeah okay so like okay so you gotta spread we're going to have to eventually reach the Ice Shield 21 because it's one of my favorite mangas out there. But I'm not going to give it a free pass for what the fuck it did for that one because it's so out of pocket. It's, it's so out of left field. It's legitimately insane. It's literally like, like a full page spread of them being like, black people are just genetically better than <laughs> It's so fucked up. It's it's so weird when they get into it because it just comes out of fucking nowhere. And I guess they try it. It's someone trying. It's a little bit different, I guess, because in basketball, because I feel like by this point, Slam Dunk had established that people know who the best players of basketball are. And it just so happens to also be a lot of black people. It just ends up being the thing of like black people love basketball. Now, ain't nothing wrong with that. It just so happened there's plenty of white people who also love it, as plenty of Asian, plenty of that, and also plenty of tall Asian ones as well. There's specific people who are Asian and tall, and that's the entire reason they're famous for basketball. So it's not like this crazy thing. But in football, where it's a little bit like harder to understand, I guess because it's not well established in Japan, like something like basketball is. Um, I feel like I Shield Twenty One tried to explain it in a way that was like. All right, let me tell you how fucked they are. And they went on in a completely wild tangent. <laughs> it was so crazy. So I was kind of happy to not have that here in Koroko. Yeah, like, they didn't They didn't go... Abs- it, 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 the Ice Shield 21 one reminds me of like a Jujutsu Kaisen page where they're like explaining how Gojo's Limitless worked. Yes, 100%. They, you, you haven't That's even... exactly what it is, except it's about the genetics of black people. 100%. And you know what the craziest thing about that later on is that, that a, f- a fucking, like, nine-foot-tall Japanese dinosaur man joins the team. And it completely throws everything that they said previously off the window. <laughs> but that's a, that's, a, that's a future problem that we're going to deal with. Let's deal with Tokoroko now. I thought they ended up handling it perfectly well. Um, considering how bad... <laughs> I, I, on the current list of how bad they handle it, <laughs> Ice Shield 21 is number one, in my eyes. Yeah. And yeah, it's... It's one of those things where it's like, could it have been done better? Yeah, but, it, it, you know. Yeah, oh my god, yes. Could it have not happened at all? Totally. 100%. But it certainly wasn't as bad as it could have been. They could have just simply left it as, uh, uh, left it as like, he's from, uh, he's a foreigner and he's very good and that's it. It just so happens that it's a lot of other things, and I don't know. There, the the one thing that I, th- I did think was really funny is that they can't pronounce his name just because it's so foreign to them. <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, it's like not pronounced in a way that 
a Japanese person would pronounce it. No, and it also confuses Kagami because he was from America. So this guy's also not from America, I think, uh, based off of the name. And his, the accent they give him also doesn't sound particularly American either. You know? No, no, because the, they, they have a very specific way they give to American people speaking Japanese, and it doesn't sound like that. Um, it's really funny that if you watch enough anime, you just know how they translate if someone is a foreigner <laughs> by the way they speak the Japanese of it. Um, but yeah, so it ends up being that it's perfectly fine. It is a little bit funny in a way of like, ha ha. It's literally the whole central conflict here is that this guy is black, <laughs> but that's about it. And it's a very, just a very silly thing here. Um, I did like the bit where he starts crowd surfing uh, when he throws him and he goes like, oh, uh, yeah, that's not the only thing I picked up from America. It's like, oh, my God, he's doing American crowd surfing. <laughs> yeah, he's doing an American technique. And crowd it's all- surfing. <laughs> yes. And also when he's crowd surfing, he's on top of him like he's a s- surfboard. <laughs> Yeah, he's like literally surfing. He's not like crowd surfing. He's he's the other guy is crowd surfing, and Kagami is riding him like an actual surfboard. Yeah, which is really funny. And that, like you said, his reaction here of him saying, "This is Japanese lunchtime rush," and he says it like in <laughs> English. Yeah, he says it in in like JoJo English, where like they say it terribly. Yeah, this is Japanese, Japanese lunch time rush, time rush. <laughs> and it's so amazing. He says it twice. And he does it twice. <laughs> It's both times were amazing. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. I love and I love nothing more than people speak English, English when it's not their first language. <laughs> it's lovely. More of it should happen. Um, but yeah, I like that test. What they do with the, uh, what they do with the sandwich. I also like when he eventually gets the BLT. He gets like this huge ass fucking sandwich. <laughs> I think it's any time uh, Kagami is eating. I think it's hilarious because <laughs> he eats so much. Yeah, he eats, like, Goku comical amounts of food. Yeah, and I think it's in this... No, I don't think it's in this one, but I think it's in a later one where they show the difference between how much he needs to eat to get his stamina back versus how much uh, Kuroko needs to eat. It is like a, is almost not at all. Yeah, almost <laughs> non-existent, which is really funny. Uh, so, yeah, I thought it was a good setup. I liked it when Kuroko got picked up and he was called a child. No, little boy, children shouldn't be on the court. <laughs> Yeah, he's, like, scolding him. He is. He's just trying to be like, please, no, boy, we're going to be playing basketball here. And he gets very offended by that. Um, And I also like this because this starts the trending bit of uh, someone makes Kuroko slightly miffed. And he completely fucking schools them in basketball by passing really good. (laughs) Because he does this to him, and he does it later on against the point guard guy, and he does it right before the ending of the fifth episode that we talk about, where anytime anyone's, like, underestimating either him or his team, he completely just, like, fucking 180 backfires it, blows it up in their face, and it's awesome every single time. So, I thought it was a good... I think this is also where I started to notice, because I hadn't noticed up until this point, the ED actually has uh, a part of it that changes each episode, and I never noticed that before. Um, this is the one I noticed, because in this one, he, uh, dad, he's there as Superman, I think. That's there at the ED. Um. Did we ever, um, put, like, rank the Kuroko ED? Because we talked about it, like, in Tama once. Did we ever talk about the Kuroko one? No, because we only had one so far. Well, yeah, but we still talked about, like, do you like this one or not? No, I don't think we did, because we were very, I was very confused on that one, so I don't think we ever talked about the ED, actually. So, we, there, this shame. is a good time. We can talk about it right now. Go ahead. Yeah, Tell me what, what do you... the OP and the ED are very good. Yes, they are. Um, especially as time has gone on, they've really caught up to me. Because in the beginning, I was like, I think the OP starts off much better of the dee 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 dee, like the, the guitar riff it has in the beginning, where the ED by the end of it catches me, where I'm like, in the beginning, it's like, oh yeah, this is pretty good. And then by the end of it, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm fully into yeah. it now. <laughs> so I think both of them are done pretty well. And yeah, I like this bit where they actually change it. And now after that, I started making note of it. And it's actually some of my favorite things that show up at the ED now. <laughs> is paying attention to it. So yeah, this one, he's there as Superman, I think. And very good. So yeah, that's how I feel about this one. Good setup for the game. Good way of them kind of getting their feet wet and sewing. This guy, I also like that this guy tries to trash talk the Generation of Miracles. And it also comes up in the next one about how like... No, actually, you don't really compare to them, so maybe stifle yourself before you try and compare yourself to them. Yeah, he gives them the big, like, you don't fucking 
have a chance against these guys. Yeah. Like, compared to them, you are not on the same level. Which is a good way of kind of building them up and there still being, like, some form of a... Like, a threat to their actual game plan where they're not actually going against them. So, yeah. That's how I feel about this episode. What about you, Zen? Uh, really good. Really, really good episode. Uh, I like this game a lot. I just like the whole, like... We got a... Uh, make a stand kind of thing against this team that's really good and kind of fucking us up. Um, that's always cool to me. Um, I don't know. It's all the Kuroko does it a lot where they're like, "Uh oh, you know, we're in trouble," and then they're like, "Bam, no, we're not. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're we're rad." Super uh, throw. Super yeah, that pass. shit always gets me. Uh, so uh, I I enjoy it a lot when it happened here as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now let's go into the next one so we can actually continue talking about the game itself. Episode 7. You'll see something amazing. So go ahead, Zen. Tell us more about the basketball which Koriko plays. Episode 7, we finish with Saren currently leading. They have been smoking them for a minute because Koroko is a big offensive help for them. So they're able to score a lot of points quickly. They pull Koroko out so he doesn't get overtired. Uh, and they leave Kagami in to deal with Papa by himself. Uh, they are slowly regaining ground because there's only so much that Kagami can do. Um, even though he learns how to guard him from practicing with Mitobe, like he learns a special technique for how to block off someone bigger than you, um, he still is eventually regaining ground. Uh, they pull Kuroko back in. And Saren does end up winning by a decent margin. I think it's like 10 points. Uh, after Kagami spikes a shot down that they had been trying to put in. Um, they are all about themselves. And so the coach, Rico, is like, okay, we need to go scout. Because I need you to see that like you're not hot shit. Uh, so they go watch Midorima play. And this is when we get the reveal that Midorima never misses his shots. Um, that's why he carries around all the good luck charms and stuff, is so that he'll always land his shots. He does, and he does that really cool thing where he's like, um, he shoots, and then he turns around, and he's like, we're on defense, come on. And his buddy's like, hey man, listen, if you miss, they're going to give me shit for walking back with you. And he's like, I always, I never miss. And he's like still walking, and then we see the ball behind his head fall through the hoop, which is so fucking cool. Um, and then we kind of learn later on that the tournament bracket is going on and they're going to have to play two of the teams that are considered the emperors of high school basketball, um, in order to proceed into the inter-high tournament. Yes, and that is the ending for this one. So, this one I thought was really good because we got to see, um, more of them actually winning, um them dealing with Papa and being able to win. I also like the ending where uh, Papa goes to like say like it looks like he's gonna congratulate them for beating for winning and then he basically he yeah, it's, it's it starts idiot. he starts with that and then he eventually goes into you I'm gonna beat you next time he's like he immediately starts ranting and he has to be dragged away. <laughs> it's like listen please you're embarrassing yourself <laughs> stop doing this <laughs> Which I thought was very funny. Because it also, I think, catches Kagami off guard. He's like, what? <laughs> what did you say to me? Well, pretty good. And yeah, I like that they just start smoking the next couple teams. I think they also mentioned that sometimes they don't even use Kuroko at all. Just to show, like, oh no, they're still good even without him. Which I think is pretty good to establish. It can be a little bit tough in a specific sports when... Um, anime or manga where when one player is clearly better than a lot of the other ones it can make it feel a little bit weird when they're not on the field or not in play it makes it feel like the other ones could be a little bit of a side thing so it's best to kind of establish like no they can win perfectly fine without them it's just that kuroko is so good it alleviates them during the harder spots so against specific teams where it's like they're not that big of a threat and kuroko is not needed they easily got this no problem um, I think this, during this montage is also where you see, like, they're not using Karako, but he's feeling a little bit antsy because he wants to play. Yeah, where he's, like, they have, he has the little things coming off of him. Yeah. That are, like, uh, that he's getting, um, what do you call it? Anxious? 
Yeah, he's like anxious and pent up. He wants to get out there. Yeah, which is which is a good way to showing like even if he's not, even if they don't need him, it's more like he still just wants to go out there and play. So that's cool. Um, I like showing this team off. They also have this really good thing for the ED here, where this player who is named Mitarama, Mitarima, 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 um. They, during the ending shot, they show him, like, shooting the shot, and then they have, like, this, like, um, uh, sil- not a silhouette. What is it called when it's transparent and you're, like, they're kind of, like, looking from above kind of thing? Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, at the end of, like, a JoJo part where all the characters are up in the sky and they're looking down and being, like, all happy? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, I do know what you're talking about, but I don't don't know what you would call it yeah i don't know what to call it either but they have it for him where it's the frog and then at the end of it is it is the bear that he brought with him looking on <laughs> looking on in his general direction as he's shooting a shot <laughs> which is really funny um <laughs> it's a very good bit here i also like this introduction here where he's making those shots and he's just like not missing and then i think they also established like the because he's such a particular player they only allow him three requests a game to do whatever he wants and that's it because i think the manager says like because he says like i want to start at the beginning here and he goes like okay this is your like one of three so so be careful with the other ones because you know i'm only gonna listen to you three times and that's it which is cool it's a good way to establish them and show like oh no there's other people of the generation of miracles are very hard to deal with and uh, i like the ending bit here where they talk about like oh no we're gonna be facing some tough ass dudes for the for the for the for the semifinals where we're gonna be fighting two of the three emperor teams basically uh and yeah it was another good way of establishing some basketball how do you feel zen uh really good i really like midorima I uh, I find the ability to always score whenever you shoot to be fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, uh, especially because when really they say good. like he's playing really good, and Kuroko's like, "Is he?" Because he, I've never seen a miss. So he, this is just him playing. <laughs> yeah, this is just like him normally playing. Yeah, uh, super fucking cool. Um, I really love that shot of him where he just sinks the shot from nowhere, and he's like, "Yeah, just let's just go." Like, the, why are we wasting the time? I, I'm, I don't miss it. It's fine. Uh, it's really good. Um, all of it's really good. Uh, Midorima is one of my favorite members of the Generation of Miracles because he is just, like... He's the comical without trying to be funny character. The one that's, like, I, he, the, he's not doing anything to make you laugh, but he's funny. Similar to Kuroko, uh, where it's he's just... He is who he is, and that's funny. Yes. Where he just is, he does what he do, and that's funny on its own. Yeah, I can definitely see that. I ended up liking him over the course of this, especially the way um, it kind of goes for him near the end of episode 10 that we'll get to eventually. But it's this was a very good introduction of how he do how he does things and how good he is and explaining a lot of like the his specific quirks of what he has. Like, for example, he uh, his hands are all taped up to make sure that they're perfect for when it's actually time to play the game. And how cautious he is about absolutely everything that's going on around him. It's pretty good. So, another good setup here. Let's go on to the next episode, which is episode 8. Now that I think about it, that's it. We'll find out what they're thinking about. Zen, tell us more. About what they thinking about in episode eight. All right, episode eight. We are introduced to Seho, who is the first team they're going to be playing against. Uh, they're a team that beat Seiren last year so bad that they like have PTSD from it. They like obliterated them. Um, Kuroko wants to win for everyone, and then Kagami kind of gets the same way. And we get a little backstory on one of their players who's like this older, or, or not older, but he's a younger player. Uh, and he, it shows him playing against the Generation of Miracles in middle school. And he's like a weird sadist dude. Um, he he kind of has like a history with Kisei of being a dick to him. Um, 
and he was good enough to stop Kisei, actually. Which, again, one, it kind of reinforces that Kisei is the weakest member of the Generation of Miracles, but then it also establishes that, like, this guy's capable of stopping someone who Kagami couldn't mm-hmm. stop. Um, we learn that they use, like, special martial arts abilities where they, like, run... Instead of running with their arms and legs opposite, they run with them on the same side. And apparently, like, I'm pretty sure this is all bullshit, but apparently, like, if you if you run that way and you don't, like, twist your body when you run, um, you you have better results while, run, like, you don't tire yourself out, I guess. Um, it, it all sounds like horseshit to me, but <laughs> supposedly that's what they do. Um and the guy keeps like fucking with Kagami and it keeps causing him to commit fouls. So Kagami is building up like a massive amount of fouls very quickly because he keeps getting played by this dude who is talking shit basically, just talking a mess a whole lot of mess. Uh and it's causing him to progressively basically lose his cool. Mhm. I think he gets... Is this the one where he gets up to four? Or is that the next episode where he gets the fourth foul? Mm, Ah, shit. I think this one... Either way, he gets up to four fouls. And when you get four fouls, you're, like, ejected. No, he gets to... Because he doesn't get ejected. Because if he got ejected, he wouldn't be able to play in the Well, he doesn't get ejected in the end, but... um, I think he gets up to three. It's a big deal because he has so many that if he gets one more, he'll get ejected from the game. I think it happens in. Hmm, I think it happens at the beginning of the next one, where it's like to win. Yes, in the beginning of the next one, that's where he gets his third foul. But he gets two here. But that's where he starts. Yeah, once he starts getting fouled and they start counting it, that's to let you know like this is going to come into play. Because <laughs> no, no sports thing ever brings up a foul unless it means that potentially this player is going to have to deal with this. Yeah, it's very uh, Chekhov's foul, if you will. Exactly. But yeah, we'll we'll start we'll start for here because yeah, the 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 game kind of goes on for the next two. Yeah, it's a it's a multi episode game. Yeah, definitely for a while. So we'll we'll, we'll start talking about it from here. Um, I like the beginning of this one. I like that, um, Kisei is checking up on the horoscope to see how well Mitorama will do versus how well Koriko is fated to do. Yeah, when he watches it and it's like, Cancer's the best and, uh, Aquarius is the worst. Yeah, so basically Mitorama's at top and Koriko's at the absolute bottom. (laughs) So they're already saying, like, this is not looking too good for him right now. Um, I like this. I also like when he's like, uh, oh yeah, Mitorama's a Cancer. Kuroko's an Aquarius, and the guy's like, I did not ask you that. <laughs> <laughs> did not ask you that. Didn't ask. Didn't care. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, didn't ask, don't care. Um, I liked them looking at the tape of seeing how well these guys do. They do a very good job of saying, like, this team is someone, even though they're not, consi- even though they don't have anyone in the generation of miracles in the team, they still are a big threat, like, to the point where even Midorama's like, I don't want to really deal with them. If, I, if it were up to me, I would not really play against them. <laughs> I don't really want to do it, but it looks like I'm going to have to, so it's something we're just going to have to deal with. Um... I kind of like the establishment of how oh, these this this guy that was blocking um, uh, Kagami for the vast majority of the game was doing a real good job of pissing me off because every time he opened his mouth, it made me hate him even more. <laughs> I hated yeah, him. Yeah, he's a real dick. He's absolutely a terrible, terrible person. He's saying stuff like, oh, man, remember when y'all lost? He's basically someone who's like, remember when you lost, losers? Loser, man, what a terrible losing team. Let's go. <laughs> He says stuff like whenever he sees Kirko, he's like, ah, whatever, nothing. He's basically like one of those dudes who goes like, um, (laughs) I'm trying to think of like this specific person. You remember those dudes in like baseball games who yell like, ah, whatever, we're going to have a miss. And they just start like screaming shit at the top of their lungs. That's what this guy is, but in actual, (laughs) as an actual player. So he was infuriating (laughs) every single time I saw him. Yeah, he's a real dick. And the one time where he's like, oh, yeah, uh, I really wanted to beat you guys by 30 this time. 
Yes, I was and like, like mm. Mm. and then Kirk, thick, ain't you? yeah, and Kirk, and then Kirk tells him like, "I'll be sure not to be disappointed," and he completely yes, stops. Which is a great line where he's like, uh, "You know, don't get too upset if you can't handle us." And he's like, "Okay, I'll make sure that I'm not disappointed." Like, ba- and basically meaning like I'm gonna win. Yeah, he 100% whoops him, and then the loud mouth that he has is like, oh, we're nowhere near our goal, and then his the team leader for them is just like, shut up! Yeah, will you shut the fuck up, please? God, I'm so tired of you. And then when he asks them to apologize, he's like, you're basically doing the same thing I'm doing. He's like, shut up, I'm not sure, sh- I don't sugarcoat words, it's different from what you're doing. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, they do a good job of establishing to make you hate this team as much as possible. Because in every single way, you don't want to see them win. But they're just doing such a good job at like defending, and they seem to have their number. And they they just like absolutely creamed them last time that they tried to go against each other. Um, it, but it also felt really good when Kagami was finally able to actually like score. And it seemed like, oh, maybe it's going to start going in their direction. But then we see in the next one that it doesn't 100% happen that way. And it's still actually a very tough game to go for. But it was a good start to this game. And I was, I didn't actually end up making much note of it because I was just like sitting back and watching. <laughs> yep. Just kind of enjoying what was it, what I was seeing here. How do you feel about it, Zen? It's good. I hate this team. These guys fucking suck. Uh, <laughs> I hate that dude who's just an asshole. 100%. Um, oh, we've completely forgot. Speaking of t- dudes I hate, um, one of the dudes that they beat were the dudes on the on the, on the the field that they beat in the street game. Yeah, they, that was so funny. That was so they funny, were like, yeah. For some reason, the enemy team was terrified. <laughs> yeah, they were like very apologetic with it. But they were doing similar things where they were trash talking, so like, whatever, bye, win, let's go. We're going to beat them already. And then the second they saw Kagami, it was like, oh, no, we're losing. <laughs> we lost. Yeah, they have, like, the PTSD flashback. Yeah, like the, the Kill Bill. <laughs> Looking at Kagami's face. And it was good to see him kind of get beat. And that was that that team was very similar to them, except for they could actually back up what they were saying in a very frustrating way. Uh, yeah, continue on with what you were saying. You hate this team? Uh, basically, just I hate those guys. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, they suck. 100%. Uh, let's go on to the next one so we can continue talking about the game. Episode 9, to win. So, go. episode 9, uh, the game continues. Kuroko, or not Kuroko, uh, Kagami ends up getting his fourth foul because the guy kind of kind of on purpose like sets up a situation where he has to foul um like like he runs into it more or less but kagami still gets the fourth one so he gets subbed out um so does kuriko because they want them to be ready for the next game because they have to play a second game after this uh which will be against shutoku if they win uh so they leave the seniors in so it's it's basically the seniors are playing without our boys uh, which is, I think, the first time that's happened. Um, and they end up holding their own, using their, their special techniques and stuff. Um, Seho is winning, uh, but we get a little cool bit about, like, you know, the seniors haven't given up, because Kagami was kind of doom and gloom about it, and he was like, oh, I'm out of the game, Kuroko's out of the game, we're, we're toast. Uh, and the seniors are actually doing pretty good, and they're they're doing their thing. Um one of their dudes, I think it's the Kitty Mouth dude, gets a concussion. It is the can't Kitty Cat play Man. anymore. Yeah, Kitty Cat Man. So Kuroko comes back in and he says, you know, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay you back for you fucking over Kagami like that. Um, which is cool as fuck. Kuroko, like for someone who's just like a sad little nerd, he's so fucking cool. He is. He does end up saying a lot of cool things. And it helps that he doesn't really get uh, super angry, but he also still feels... He delivers it in such a way that it's like, damn, he's going to get him. You know, I 100% feel it that he's about to get fucking wreck this guy. And he thankfully he does. <laughs> spoilers, he does in the next one. 100%. This guy's like 100% out of his fucking league um, in a lot of ways. So yeah, this one. Uh, I really liked it because they set up the seniors to say, like, they had been learning a lot from the previous game. 
that they had uh, a year ago where they just got completely decimated. And they say a little bit before this one in the previous episode where they said, like, after they lost, they hated basketball. And they just couldn't feel like um, it almost made them quit, but it ended up being that they didn't quit and they're okay now. And Kuroko can really sympathize with them because he kind of understands also being in a situation where you can't, like... You, like, you stop enjoying the thing that you love. There's, like, a huge pain in here. It's basically the pain... What he was saying here is the same pain I feel whenever I open up Dokkan. Where it's like, damn, this <laughs> thing I love, I hate so much. And you hate to hate it so much. But there's just <laughs> something about it that you don't love anymore. And it's one of the most hurtful feelings ever. <laughs> and I felt... That's very funny. It, <laughs> it is. But that's the feeling that you get. And it sucks. Nobody wants to hate the thing that they loved once. And as he's telling Kagami this, because I think he starts his question saying, like, have you ever hated basketball? And Kagami says, like, I've never hated basketball. I can't feel that. But at the end, he says, like, I can feel what you're saying is, like, I want to win. I can feel that 100 <laughs> percent, which is really funny because yeah, he he's like, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. He basically hit him with a, I like your words, magic man. <laughs> <laughs> Because he didn't understand a shit thing he was saying about, like, not being able to enjoy basketball. When he's like, I don't know, you lost me at that. But then I heard your ending words where you said we're going to win. And I'm like, I'm fucking down. You know what I'm saying? He totally does do that. He 100% does that with Kuriko, which is really funny. He totally does do that. It's really funny. Um, So, yeah, I also like seeing uh, someone actually exploit Kagami's weakness, which is uh, being... um, angry <laughs> and probably being very easy to get someone to foul you uh when he did that when he got that four foul and he did it on purpose when he did the soccer fall I was like you piece of shit you have no honor for the game basketball you're doing this here playing the basketball which Karako plays and you're gonna have fucking do this <laughs> and you're gonna be that guy you're gonna be that yeah. guy unbelievable the fucking smug smile that he has as well and the way he that he's just like oh, i'm gonna torture these dudes i fucking hate them i 100 i've never hated a character more than this guy <laughs> yeah he really sucks he really uh, does guy fucking blows. does he ever come back <laughs> is this the end of him um this is the end of him good i hate i hate him i hope that he does are... show up later on but he doesn't really do anything but it's, it's one of those cases where he just shows up to job out that's basically all he. They, i don't think they play i'm pretty sure he shows up and they're like yeah we got eliminated already yes yeah, see job he, he gets hit to the job squad because you know nobody liked his personality nobody liked anything about him you're just here to make someone else look good to the person you lost anyway um so yeah i really like this one i like the seniors i like that they start giving like saying like oh yeah they might not be on like kuroko's crazy level but or kagami's but they have a bunch of stuff to them that makes them very useful like izuki has the the eagle eye which allows him to yes. which allows him to see like basically the entire court in a really crazy way kitty cat man has the ability where he can shoot from anywhere but he's a terrible shot <laughs> yeah the they don't have like a special power for him, so they're like he can he can shoot from anywhere on the court, and they're like, but that's just anyone that, can do that. Yeah, and then the guy that actually has the special because like he's really good at rebounding, he just keeps giving him the ball back <laughs> every single time he misses, which is really funny. Um, I like that the other uh, basically every single senior got to kind of do their thing and show like, oh no, we're we're just as good, and we've been learning a lot, so they've been able to like. Uh, learn from the game previously and just be better at the game which is really cool uh and i like the ending bit of course where kuroko tags in after kitty cat man suffers a concussion (laughs) and he his concussion is treated much more as a joke compared to kuroko's head injury (laughs) yes when kuroko got hurt they were like damn damn this This guy is like oh you're hurt get out ah damn it i guess we'll replace him with someone um I also like the bit where when uh, Kagami starts speaking, he's like, you gotta let me back in. And Kuroko, like, puts a finger over his mouth and says, like, the guy with four fouls shouldn't be on there. I agree. And then he responds back by putting his whole hand for over his face. Yeah. <laughs> Very good bit. Um, and yeah, I liked, uh, I liked where this game is going, and I was excited to see it to the end here in episode 10. But before we get there, let me ask you, Zen. How do you feel about it? Really good. Top quality stuff. Um, this game is like... This is sort of the format that games take from this point forward. Um, 
which mm. is like shit it goes down and then we have a multi-episode kind of contest to uh, uh figure out how it's going to end up um so this is the first time where we see a game that really goes that long i mean the game there was the game against the last guy but that didn't like go on for all that long you know mm-hmm. it was kind of like it's papa mm-hmm. um papa Kise, didn't last Kise but had so long. like two episodes right yeah kisei was two episodes i think papa was also two episodes um mm-hmm. And so this is the first one where it's like, I know, I think this is also the first one where it's like tournament contention is on the line. Like mm-hmm. they have to, they have to do this to to get into the tournament. Um, Something's on the line, which I really was a big fan of as well because a lot of this show is like tournament, right? Like that's it. We got to get in the tournament. That's that's the whole thing. Um, so it uh, stays consistent with everything. It kind of. St- sets the tone for the rest of all the shit that's going to happen in the series. Um, kind of love it. Kind of love every time Kuroko's like, um, fuck y'all. <laughs> it's a very good bit. I'll agree. Again, there's something specific to Shonen MCs just saying no to somebody <laughs> in, in, the, in, the, the, in the in the if you break it down the actual true best quality a Shonen protagonist can have is how well can they put down someone who is insulting them mm-hmm. and saying it That's in true. in the in the like the coldest way possible like with the calmest way you can imagine and just being like boom we're done obviously the king of it uh goku when he calls frieza a fool he blasts him and he gives him like a sad face Obviously, yeah, he gives him the you fool. Yeah, that's yeah, a good he, he hits him up with a you fool, and then like he gives him a sad face to let him know that he's disappointed. Obviously, the progenitor here, he barely even has to say any words here. That's why he's the top. That's why he's Goku. That's why people follow him. That's a pretty good one. Uh, some other ones that I can think of right here. There's actually plot a lot of it. Obviously, Kuroko does it really good here, where he's just like, yeah, well. Shut. <laughs> yeah, well, shut up. No, he doesn't say that. Specifically. Yeah, he's pretty much just like, "Hey, fuck you." <laughs> yeah, and in, in, the, in the calmest way possible, he says, "Why don't you go eat a dick?" And he says, <laughs> "He says it in the nicest way possible." <laughs> in, in a very, in very Kuroko fashion. Yeah, he's like, "Hey, how about you go fuck yourself?" Yeah, in the nicest way that you can imagine. It's a true testament of any MC is your ability to do that. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other ones that have been for the years. I probably can't think because we've been talking so long, but there's definitely a lot of examples. Obviously, the Goku one pops up in the head most because I have Dragon Ball brain rot, as I said previously, as my Dokkan brain. Uh, let's move on to episode 10, Zen. I can't have episode that. Episode 10 can't have that. This yeah. is the finale of the game. Kuroko is cutting up their defense with passes. Uh, they realize that because they use this specialized movement technique, that their movements are efficient but limited. Like, they're they're not moving a lot. Um, Kagami is kind of seeing what Kuroko can do without him, which I think it's the first time that he's ever really seen him play, and he's kind of impressed at, like, the speed and stuff at which he plays the game. Um... Kuroko basically carries it. Like, that's what it is. Uh, they do end up winning by exactly one basket, uh, just barely getting through. And we kind of have a big heroes moment, and then we look over to realize that Shutoku won their game by almost 100 points. Um, and we get this really cool little setup where Kuroko's in the bathroom, and the Shutoku people are in there, and one of them notices him, which normally people don't do. Um... We start the game with uh, Shitoku, and Midorima scores an extremely early goal with a three-pointer, and he's kind of giving the, like, you we're just better than you speech, and then Kuroko busts out his whirlwind pass for the first time uh, and shocks everyone as he launches that shit straight past... Um, Midorima. Uh, Midorima. Uh, Midorima. Yeah, and then... That is where the episode ends, unfortunately, which is a shame because, it, God, that's a really good I moment. was so pissed <laughs> that this is where it ended. 
I was like, how many, how could long could this be? And I looked, it was like, okay, this potentially is going to take a couple episodes. I can't just say to Zen, oh, oops, I watched some more episodes last minute. Oops, so <laughs> guess we got to talk about them. Oops. It, it took every single fiber of my being to just not immediately continue on. Similar, we, I'm like realizing this now, we've picked probably the most infuriating two series to talk back to back because I'm like Homer when he's trying to decide best picture between Barney's extremely sad uh, My Life Has No Meaning movie and Man Gets Kicked in, in Nuts by Football, where I'm just, like, going between the two of them, going, like, oh, yeah, this is great, and then I'm going to the other one's like, but this one's so good. Yeah, it's hard to to come around on it. They're, they're both so good, and they always, like... <laughs> just stop in awkward spots. We have to keep like changing what we do because we're like, shit, we can't, we can't keep going because yeah, there's we... another arc coming if we go. Yeah, it's a it's a whole thing here. So I felt really, uh... <laughs> I was real angry after that. <laughs> I was ang- actively angry at myself for this, but it was a re- just shows to show how good of an episode this was and how hyped I was for it. That I was just like, nah, keep going, keep going, keep it rolling, baby, keep it rolling. Um, so yeah, uh, to start with this one, the ending of the previous game, I loved it completely because, uh, Kuroko fucking shits on that other guy. Just unbelievable. The final pass that he does, where he's like, I'm blocking him, I'm blocking him. And then, like, in the frame of one second, he goes like, no way this guy's changing his pass that quickly. He goes like, actually, yes, I am, bitch. (laughs) Yep, I sure am. Get fucked. (laughs) Get absolutely destroyed, idiot. (laughs) And he (laughs) gets destroyed it's the, maybe the greatest is that the the ability here that they've given kuroko where all he really does is be really good at passing is amazing um because it really does it's i've never seen like the act of the pass put puts like obviously it's really easy to make a slam dunk look amazing there's an entire manga called Slam Dunk, which has shown me anything is that a slam dunk is fucking awesome, and it's extremely right. debilitating, and it's also great to draw. Um, and there's a lot of other basketball moves that you can do that can be done very well, but a pass is very hard to make look good, but that the way Kuroko passes, it just looks so good every single time he does it. And he does it in, like, the... Cra- He's like the Jedi, you know how, like, in... Um, the first three, not the first three, uh, episodes one, two, and three, how the Jedi have, like, this flourishing movement, and you're like, I don't know why they're spinning a whole bunch, but they sure do spin really good. <laughs> that's basically what yeah. he does with passing. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah, that's more or less exactly what it is. Yeah. So it's really cool to see him there. I love that they won by the one point. I like that they immediately got shut down. I like that that guy had his little bitch fit at the end, where he's like, whatever, we trained so hard, man. We we weren't supposed to be this way. He starts like breaking down, crying, and I was just like, "Get fucked! You deserve to lose." <laughs> Get fucked! Yeah, fuck you. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Y'all got smoked. Y'all, every single one of them were like doubting it the entire time, and it was good to see him just kind of lose, which is like, also a good sign for villains. I like. I'm always a fan of the villains that I like to see lose, and I actually absolutely hate. Um, it's re- it's a real dichotomy because those are typically not the ones that I would ever consider characters that I like because I go like, no, I absolutely fucking hate them. I hate their guts and I hate absolutely everything about them. But those are the ones I like to see lose most because those are the ones that are the most satisfying to me. When I have like a yeah, villain, yeah, when I have like a villain who's like, oh, I kind of like this guy or he, oh, he has like a good point. I never feel good when they like lose. I'm always just like, damn, that kind of sucks. They're gone now. But as opposed to when a dude is just straight up like, oh, no, I'm a fucking villain and I'm here to cackle and I'm here to be just like ultimate shit heel possible. And then when he gets taken down, it's the most satisfying thing in the world. It's like, "Mm, this is what I love. I love (laughs) black and white. I like good guy versus bad guy. (laughs) Just right through. Yes. Good guy, bad guy. No questions asked. Exactly, 100%. That's why I love uh, S- uh, Super Sentai so much, because the bad guys are very clearly like, I've just put a busload of orphans, uh, you know, strapped them with dynamite and put them over a cliff. What is your plan of action, hero? 
<laughs> it's like, yeah, though I hate this guy. <laughs> I absolutely want them to to lose. Those are my favorite types of villains. It's not the ones that are like, I grew up in a very tough neighborhood, and let me tell you, the government just isn't treating us right with their uh, the way that they hold us back. And if we just rally together, it's like, oh no, that guy has a point. I don't want. I don't think he's a good villain. But the guy who straps a puppy to a bomb—that's the guy who I'm like, yeah, big villain. And that's how I'm always villainy. peak villainy hours. So yeah, that's what this this team right here is the basketball equivalent of putting a dynamite to a puppy and then releasing them into an orphanage. It's true. They're the worst. Absolutely. So I love the end of this game and I love the beating of them. And then uh, the start here with Midorama, uh, Midorima where he's doing his like super cool shot. And I love it because when they first established this in the previous episodes, it was, like, so cool. It's, like, the most debilitating thing ever because they even talk about how, like, it's in the air for so long. And it's basically, like, there's no way for you not to look at that and just kind of feel depressed. And you kind they, they really established that on the, on the court where they're, like, um... They're, like, depressed after he makes their shot because they were fighting so hard to prevent it. And then, like, he just makes the most insane three-pointer ever, and they've lost control of the court. But then, um, Kuroko's just like, nah, I'm not giving you the first quarter that easy. And he just fucking, like, whirlwind <laughs> passes this shit and gets a dunk in, and it was, like, the coldest fucking thing I've seen <laughs> in a basketball yeah, thing. so fucking rad. So good. Shit goes crazy. So good. It was fantastic. Uh, I also do like the differences that they show, because I feel like they're kind of like, you don't have to tell me because it's fine if I learn it in the upcoming episodes, but uh, Midorima and the guy that he's typically with have a relationship that is kind of similar to Kuroko and Kagami, in which they're usually always together with each other. And the way that they say it in the first one, when they show him after he does his shot, and he tells him like, all right, let's go on defense immediately. The guy's like, and, and you know, I'm going to get in trouble if I go on defense. He's like, whatever, just I always make my shot. Let's go in. Um, it kind of shows the opposite here because when um, Kuroko sees that the ball's going for him, he tells Kagami immediately, run, and run to the end of the court. And he never stops to, like, question it. He doesn't say, like, what do you mean? He just goes, you got it. And he immediately is at the end of the court. He immediately knows what Kuroko wants and what he's planning on. And I think that's a very good interesting like difference and dichotomy between the relationship between this team's two big ace dudes that it seems like it's going to be building up who are first years and their versions of the first years so i thought that was a pretty cool like difference and setup and i'm interested to see if there's any more of that in play here because that guy is also the guy who's able to see kuroko so i'm also wondering how that's going to kind of play into it in the episodes to come you don't have to tell me because i'm more than willing to just kind of yeah, experience I, no, no spoilers it spoilers here don't worry no worries here i'm really kind of excited to see where it goes and kind of see where this game kind of ends on and see where it goes from here because yeah it seems very they've already established it pretty well that it's this is going to be a very difficult game to actually win so cool good good ass episode awesome episode what do you feel zen uh agreed incredible episode uh i really like any game with the generation of miracles is when croak is at its best mm. um it's fucking rad it's so good uh, <laughs> i don't really have any words for it other than just like this is raw as fuck um, <laughs> and it's everything a... basically is mm -hmm. really good um kuroko's little moment where he's like no 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 it's not gonna be that easy it's like top one it's so good yeah, I can I can definitely just, see that. Just everything. Everything rad. <laughs> rad. Super rad. Real bummer that we're not going to be able to talk about this for another two weeks. Yes. Huge bummer. Absolute Huge. travesty. Absolute. But you know what? This is the bed that we made and we're going to lie on it. Uh, because next week we have Jujutsu Kaisen, which is also very good. <laughs> That's true. And we're going to be picking really up complain about that Yeah, either. we're going to be picking up where the previous fight was about to pop off. So really we're just going constantly between two animes where they're just constantly popping off with each other. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Great. I love I love this show. <laughs> we've done we've made an amazing thing here, Zen. And that's the end 
of Kurgo Talk for now. So, so we are, as always, as we're going to be ending this off, we want to thank you guys very much for watching Shonen Archive. As always, you can always show support by just simply watching it, to be honest, because it confuses the hell out of YouTube. You can always feel free to leave a like. It, that helps, too. But just in general, watching it is enough to make YouTube go like, I don't know what you want me to do with this information. Your, your channel's very weird. And I enjoy that aspect of it. <laughs> and that's funny enough for me. Um, if you want to check out some more Zen, you can go to his channel where he does, um, Shonen and Chill. Uh, both of uh, both of your shows having Shonen in it, Shonen Archive and Shonen and Chill is really funny <laughs> because every time I'm like, am I saying the right one? No, you don't have Shonen Archive. I have Shonen Archive over here. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. The difference is that he does it with the ocean man over there. Famed Naruto. <laughs> the most famous man to ever edit naruto for his girlfriend that's where you can see him talk you can see the both of them talk about the current ongoings in the shonen jump uh manga world well the stuff they read specifically they're not going to be talking about shit like black clover and things like that but the good stuff <laughs> they talk about the good stuff well not all of it because yeah, apparently he talk about the most of the good stuff yeah he, apparently he's still not into sakamoto days yet which is a travesty it's a sadness <laughs> that's a <laughs> No, he's not. On, well, no, he is on. Well, sort of. He'll get there eventually. <laughs> You'll yeah, see. Well, it's, it'll happen. He'll see the light eventually. By the way, one of my favorite things is, uh, uh, you know, as, as typically as you do on Twitter, Zen occasionally will say something and then a beehive will go directly into his line of sight <laughs> because his words attract like the weirdest people. I saw, I forgot what the fuck you were even, like, talking about. Like, we, what you were, like, you were dunking on some dumbass. And then, like, in the comments of what you said, is like, some dude in Portuguese saying, like, the co-host of Shonen in Chill. Yeah, I saw that. I don't know what that dude was talking about. But no, I have no idea. I was power like, to it, man. Yeah, I have no idea. I was like, I don't know if he's insulting them, but it's funny to see, like, a different language and then see Shonen in Chill. <laughs> so I was like, all right. Go for it. Go off, I guess. So yeah, you can find yeah, Zen. Go off, King. go off. You can find Zen over at his channel, which I always link at the end because I remember to do it now. And occasionally you'll see it in other videos that are unrelated to Zen because I forgot to unlink it from there. <laughs> <laughs> Just free promotion at that point. And if you want some more me stuff, you're always free to go to my channel or go to my Twitch where you can find both of me there. And honestly, you're probably not going to see very much of me because I'm probably going to go deep into Ishin. Aw, uh, damn it, I have to make videos because I'm going to be fucking working like crazy next week. I'm going to figure out something, but for the most part, I'm not going to be here. Uh, <laughs> for If you're wondering, hey, where the hell is Wookie with the videos? I'm playing Like a Dragon Nation. Give me a break. I, I, I don't have a lot in my life. That's not true. I have a lot of things to be loving for. Let me just have this, though. <laughs> Let me have a time to play video games. That's the one thing I don't have. <laughs> Except for on Mondays where you can go watch me and Zen play whatever game he wants me to play on Mondays on stream. This week it's going to be uh, Digimon World. Uh, not Sega, not a bad Sega Genesis game. Just the game Zen claims is bad but also good. It's it's one of those bad good games, you know? It's a game where it's like, hmm, why would I ever play this? But also, all right. Yeah, so I'm excited. I'm a big fan of the idea of Digimon. Those first two seasons of Digimon are real cool. And then after that, it kind of takes a nosedive for me. That's all right. <laughs> Nothing can yeah. stay perfect forever. Yeah can't have it all exactly can't have it all and that's it for this week everyone join us next week where we talk about jujutsu kaisen but if you're only here for kuroko join us two weeks from now <laughs> as we continue on with the arc but you should really check out those other ones because it's a lot of fun uh we have a lot of fun talking about whatever thing whatever anime stuff that we can figure out to talk about in general we just like talking to each other to be honest it's just the yeah, fact that there's much why we do these things yeah <laughs> it's just an excuse to hang out yeah we've been doing this for did you know that by the way because um i didn't realize this do you remember the Aureli party we threw a long time ago yes that was six years ago god damn that was six years ago yeah that was six Holy years shit. six years almost six years ago is when I was celebrating getting all uh, versions of Aureli on Dokkan and through a party. They actually finally, someone fan, trans it's been so long, someone actually did a fan translation for the PS1 Dr. Slump game that I have now on my computer that I will plan, plan to do something with in the future at some point. 
Uh, but yeah, we've been we've been doing this for a very long time together, Zen. <laughs> it's been more than six years, to be honest. Uh, it's probably been closer to maybe seven years? It has to be around seven years, yeah. At least, maybe even eight. God damn. Yeah, because it's just a slightly... If you can act... Uh, the, the funny thing is, like, it's probably... Actually, when did the first... Actually, I can look this up right now, actually. Because the first Modcast showed up in... During Super Vegito's release. Was he the anniversary unit? I don't think so. He was 1.5. So, Modcast 1. And it was, um... Gogeta. You're right, so it was 1.5, okay. Uh, holy shit, yeah, almost six years ago. I'm gonna try and see this video, but without accidentally... Playing something. Jesus Christ, man, we've done... Uh, okay, I pause this so it doesn't show up here. Let me see, when did it... July 28, 2016 is the first video featuring both of us in it. With, uh, with Penta. So we're going up close to... Yeah, in July, on 20, the 28th is when it will be officially our seven... Seven years of us recording stuff together, basically. That's fucking crazy. Dude, and even in this first episode, it's, it says, like, Modcast Episode 1, Get to Know Us, Gogeta Rates, LR Goku, and Rambling. We've been rambling since the beginning. <laughs> we uh, hey, if that's what we do. <laughs> we do. But that's it for Shonen Archive, everyone. Until next time, we'll see you when we see you. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>